Hi there, I want to show you guys very quickly how to use Excel to do some more data analysis. Okay, so I've got a set of data here, you should be comfortable with this. Um, yours may be more complicated, but I really want to uh, explore this sort of functionality a little bit more. We've got a, a nice set of data here in my table, we've got X and Y, and then I've got an error. This might be the error, it might be the deviation. Okay, I've got um, some kind of uncertainty in my values of Y. What we want to do is we want to see how we can apply these values, these uncertainties, into um, our uh, into our graph. So just to recap, how you do a graph on this, easiest way for me anyway is go insert recommended charts because we're looking at um, numeric data here. We want to have a nice line graph, okay, or a scatter graph. And what we might want to do there is just to be completely um, sort of com to be complete, I suppose. We want to make sure we've got a trend line in there. We're going to add a linear trend line in there. Okay, and we're going to um, try, if we can, to display my equation. For some reason, it's not allowing me to do that. Okay, so we can try again. If I go to add trend line, linear here, and I'll display the equation right there. Okay, fantastic. So we've got my equation on there. Now what I want to do is I want to add some error bars to it. Okay, so the way that we do that is very simple. We go to add chart element again. We've got a whole bunch of things we can add. We can add a title, we can add a, um, a data label, or something like that, you know, grid lines. But what we want to go for here are um, error bars. Okay, so if you click here, you can click on any of these options here, but I think the easiest one to go for is more error bars options. And you see that my graph kind of changes. Um, now this seems to be a, a default thing on uh, on our um, Excel to put in what we call error bars, which are these sort of uh, TIE fighter lines on both the X and the Y. For now, we're not interested in X, okay? So what I want you to do, if this happens, it may not happen with you, just delete those Xs, okay? Just delete those X error bars. Now what I'm more concerned with is the series one Y error bars. These are the vertical error bars. So if you come up here, we've got a few options. Notice we can have um, error bars in different directions. So currently they are above and below, and that's correct because plus and minus. However, if I wanted to do just minus ones, I could do just minus ones. If I wanted to do just plus ones, I can do just plus ones. I want both, so make sure that's clicked on there. Okay, we can have a few different things here. If I click away from here, you see there's a little cap on the end, there's a little line, all right? If I want to take that little cap off, I can. I'd recommend you keep them on. And then we've got the amount. That's the value. Now, currently, they are fixed at 1. All right. And so if my error is the same or my uncertainty is the same on every value, then actually I can um, I can just allow this to stay there. So if everything is plus minus 0 0.1, then I can stick in plus minus 0 0.1. And you notice my error bars become very, very small. If everything was plus minus 10, then they become very big. Let's just remove that back down to one again. Okay, now what you'll notice here is that my error bars are not actually all the same. I've got a two, a one, a two, a one, a three, and a one. And so therefore what I want to do is change them. So I've got a few options here. I could go for a percentage. I can go for the standard deviation, the standard error. Instead, I want to go for custom, and I want to specify the value. Now, this is where you get custom error bars. All right, all we're going to do is we're going to go for a positive error value, that's the plus side of things. Well, everything should be greater by these values. And then in the negative error value, we're going to do the same. And then we're going to click OK. OK, what that does is it changes my error bars and it allows me to see um, where my data is kind of working. Now, if you notice here, the, the power of this is that by adding on our error bars, we notice that my straight line begins to take a bit more meaning. What meaning does it take? Well, this line, um, if we look at this point here, it's, it's where we can have illustrate things best. Originally, with no error bar, this thing looks very far away from our straight line and we start to maybe worry about it. However, what we can see from this data set is that actually that error bar, yeah, that value, sorry, had a large uncertainty on it. So it's very likely actually it could be down here. 
i.e. it implies that my line is um, potentially true. Okay, there may be an issue with the experiment, a random error at that point, and therefore my data has deviated. That's what we call an anomaly. Okay, now this is the way that we can check that our data is working correctly if the straight line that you've fitted to your data passes through each of your error bars, then the implication is that you have done a high quality experiment. Okay, so what I want you to do is when you're working through your data, try and apply the uh, error bars and see whether your um, straight line passes through each of your error bars or not.